everybody. Um, today's going to be uh, kind of like a quick, quick tips, although it might run longer than I expect because I have a lot of different things I want to experiment with. But um, just a cheap and easy and fun way to build your stash, especially uh, if you're on a budget, uh, is these security envelopes. Um, and, you know, tax papers come in them, your pay slips come in them, your bills come in them, anything with, like, sensitive information will come with them. And they come in a lot of, like, really fun patterns, like, um, out of all of them, I only have one that's colored. I'm not sure what it's from, but it's blue. All the rest are black and white, but, like, there's these, like, I, I don't know if, like, you can see these. They're like all kinds of different patterns, like this retro -y design. It's like a take on that retro -y design. basket this kind of modeled pattern. And, um, you know, I just went through like a pile of like stuff that I have to file, and I found like all of these. And, you know, after, you know, y you at least get one pay stub every two weeks. At least one hydro bill, one internet bill, one cable bill, you know. So, yeah, they, they, they're pretty easy to save up. Some of them you get like a pretty good expanse. A lot of them have this window, which kind of sucks, but, you know. So all you have to do now, you can use them as is in black and white, or you can decorate them. And I'm going to show you like a million different ways to... To decorate them. So first things first, um, I usually am pretty savage with my envelopes and I just tear them across the top, like shove my finger in and just rip it. Um, if you were going to, let me get all this out of the way, if you were uh, planning or knew that it had like a, the security feature inside, I would take a pair of scissors and like cut it down the side. Um, but if you're like me and you savage the top, uh, I'll just show you like an easy way to, um, to open it. So instead of opening it like this and cutting along here and you kind of get this like ugly curl side, I just cut along the edge. Like I'll show you that again. I just cut along the edge. So I get like a nice clean crisp cut. And then I'm just going to tidy up up here. Cut off all my little extra bits. Now I know to cut, open my envelopes in a nice way. So let me open it up. And you've got your funky pattern paper. And it sucks because this one puts a web address on the inside, but it doesn't really matter. So, let's see. I've got materials everywhere, and I can't find my thing of water colors. Where are my water colors? I majorly need to clean my desk. Yeah. Okay. But I guess I'll need a paintbrush. I guess this'll do. And some water. So uh, you can either get watercolors like in tubes like this. Uh, and you would put them out in a little bit, in a little palette, and water them down, and these give like a nice finish. These are really nice. My art teacher in high school gifted me these when I graduated. I've had them that long. <laughs> um, but most of the time, I just use this like kids watercolor set from the dollar store. But these ones leave kind of like a chalky feeling, but... I'm just spraying it with water in a repurposed bottle. Um, so the less water there is, the thicker the color. Like, if I sit there and like, I'm gonna get like an opaque color, a more dense color. And if you water it down a lot, then you get a thinner color. So you can play around with that, you can mix colors, you can get it really wet. So there's one way to get some 
color on there. You could use some watercolor pencils. So those are some Faber Pastel ones that I got at the thrift store. And these are some that I bought at the dollar store. Let's do a side by side. I remember these really not working. So I'm just going to... Yeah, these like really don't seem to color. Whereas I think these ones go on nice, yeah, nice and thick. Like I, those ones I had to like really push. Colors are nicer and richer, that's for sure, on the Faber Castells. Now, the stupid thing is, I probably played about the same amount because I found these at the first store, missing one crayon, which I thought was awesome sauce. So you could just go and do whatever designs you wanted. Gonna, no, and then you could, I don't think I have a thing to clean water. Oh, well, it's clean-ish. You can go with like a paintbrush. Oh, I guess I'll rinse my paintbrush. Get a paper. Messy desk is messy today. And you can just spread the color out. See if it works with the other ones. Well, kind of color moves a little bit. Not, uh, not so very awesomely though compared to the Faber-Castell ones, which look super nice. Well, sometimes you do get what you pay for. <laughs> so you can do it that way. And I wanted to try what happens. I'm in experiment mode. So, what happens if I just spritz it with water? And like, if, if you really go on and put it thick, then there's a lot more pigment to move around. Ooh, the orange is really nice. Do -do 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 -do. Oh. Let's see what happens when I spritz it. No, it just gets really vibrant. Okay. Okay. I'm going to just blend it. Do -do -do. There seems to be all oh, the plastic kind of really goes far on this one. That sucks. So that's one thing you can do. Um, what else? I guess I'll just quickly finish. Oh, there. I'll let that dry. I can add more color to that another time. Let's see now. Use this as I have a lot of this one. You can use acrylic paint. Now, one thing I didn't know, let's see if I can find one of each up until relatively recently, is you can get different opacities of acrylic paint. There we go, there's one. So I don't know if you can see that. Look at this little square. They're all from the same set of paints that I got. And um, so basically a white square is, um, uh, well a dark square is opaque. Uh, the split square is semi-translucent. And the white square is translucent. So I'll, I'll, I'll just can do a comparison. See, not much pigment. So this one's translucent. Oh my, it's got kind of dry. Well, it's really dry. It's going on, and you can still see the black lines around it. What happens, like, if your paint gets dry, just dip it in a little bit of water your brush and then 
the pink will have a little movement. So you're kind of using an acrylic like a watercolor. <laughs> so that's the translucent one. So I'm going to have to knead that up. Start using I've been hoarding these paints because, you know, there's only like 10 mLs in each one. Well, I've had them for a while, but I guess they're starting to dry up. I'm going to have to use them. Herg. So this one's the half translucent. I'm going to my brush. half translucent. I'm going to knead it first. Sometimes, yeah, just kneading the tube helps. But make sure it's not all pushed against the cap, because when you take off your cap, the paint's going to come flying out. Oh, wow. I was using these paints... this summer, and they were flying. Okay, this one looks alright. And this is the loveliest green, very intense warm green. This is the loveliest green, and this mixed with, I forget what blue makes the most awesome turquoise ever. So, so if you put it on thin, you can still see through really well. And then, just dip in a bit of water, and you get really good thin coverage. And the acrylics dry fast. And they don't have a chalky feel, and they're cheap. So there's the semi-opaque one. Now you could always put a, a dab of paint in a palette and add water into it. I'll show you another technique with that after in a second. So I'll rinse off my brush. I use the purple. I'll the purple in the middle. See, it, it covers, it's opaque, it covers more. Now, if you thin it out, it should become nice and translucent, but if you were just to apply the paint directly on, it's, it's going to be opaque, and you're not going to see the lines, which is defeating the purpose of having this pretty printed paper. Um, so yeah, so you can do it with acrylics. really opaque until you water it down. Well, let's the crease. I'm getting really sloppy. Okay, that's the window. So, there's another acrylics. Now, sometimes I do this, so I guess I'll do, oh, I'll do purple. Oh, that's probably way too much. Well, I'll use it later. So I put a little bit in, and then I mix water, and I mix water. So I get this soupy, I mix water. Get this very soupy paint mixture. Okay. Actually, I'm going to use up excess on my brush. crazy technique. Um, and you can do it two ways. Let's see, get another brush. You could um, like draw with water, clean water. I know this is not exactly clean. Some design that you want or like I'll draw like a line and then try to hit it down to get like kind of drops and then you can come with your wet color you can do this with watercolors too and paint it along I don't know if you can see that 
and the paint's going to go down, you know, the, the path that the water took. Another thing you can do, is I like I like doing splatter, so I load up my brush and I just hit. This makes a mess. Um, make sure that you're using a draw cloth. <laughs> just get it everywhere. Try to aim on your project. Helps. <laughs> You can either hit with your finger, or you can hit with another thing. Sometimes I find you get smaller spatter if you hit with a utensil. And yeah, so you can get cool effects. Um, I also sometimes just, I don't know, you can just keep watering around the same amount of paint until like it goes really, really thin. Let's see. I need a tube. You can do this with a straw, I'm just using a pen tube. So I'll put like a big puddle. Then I'll blow it around with the straw. So you get these cool like patterns. So those are different ways that you can play with paint. Uh, either watered down acrylics or watercolors, whatever you wish. Um, if you use acrylic, I probably wouldn't use opaque paint. I'll take a translucent one. I just grabbed the purple, which is the last color I had. But yeah, if you make a mistake, you don't like it, you just come and spread it out. <laughs> or you can do a base color and then do spatters on top. Alright. It's getting kind of damp. Am I running out of the same ones? Oh, here's another one. <laughs> I've never played with these yet, but I got a nice set of inks with a discount card at Michael's because I want to try um, oh well wow, okay you gotta shake the heck out of these this is all process cyan acrylic artist ink um, I wanted to do uh, water marbling and so does my partner actually it's gonna be kind of fun when we do that of course I'll video so you can take inks Drop inks. Boink. These are so weird. Okay. It's full of bubbles. And you can do the same things that we were doing with the watercolors and the acrylics. Wow, these are really tricksy. I don't know why the pipette's not working. Well. Now you can, you know, pick them up and make them go this way and that way. You can blow them around. Or you can spread it around with a brush. These are kind of uh, a lot more opaque than I was expecting. Not too bad. Again, you can throw them out with water. Ooh, I like that color. I'm a huge fan of turquoise. <laughs> I have like, I don't know, I've, I've 
when I, when I was a kid, my favorite color was blue. Always. Always, always, always. Um, I have different flavors at the moment. I had hot pink for a while. I had green for a while. So I kind of like how these mix together. mesmerized by the color. <laughs> yeah, and green and I don't know, the past eight or nine years I've been fixated on turquoise. So you can color it with inks. Yeah, so we'll move to some... You can color them with markers. These are just Crayola markers, kind of on their way of dying. Um, let's see how Sharpies do. These are pink Sharpies. They work, but they, uh, yeah. They go on nice and thin. They probably bleed. Yeah. Which doesn't really matter, I guess, if you're, uh, um, uh, well, painting the other side. Regular Sharpies. So any kind of marker. If you had dyeing markers, you could pull out the, the the felt inside, cut it open, and like rub it everywhere. You could probably rub ink pad. Oh, that one doesn't work. I don't have any nice colored dye ink pads. I have some pigment ones, but pigment ones aren't stay fast. So you could, you know, do that with ink pads. I would recommend dye because dye would stay put. Whereas these will not, although probably move them around with water if you want to. Not so much. Let's make a mess. Alrighty, let's see. What else do I got? Um, I don't know if I have one here. Color them with pencil crayons. Um, which I don't have here. Well, that's the other thing I wanted to try. Color them. Let's get this open. A big box of Crayolas. I have a huge box of Crayolas I bought when I was in college. Stick with, I don't know, purple, purple. Oh, purple, but fuchsias. So you can do wax crayons. That makes color that doesn't go on too thick you can use um, or that I mean something like a chalk pastel probably isn't going to stay put these are oil pastels cheap 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 dollar store oil pastels you can smudge them um, I don't know I've never used a gelato so I don't know if gelatos go on really really thick or not but pastels work and we can do some sort of blending, I'm sure, with these. I've never really used pastels much. So, I probably gives you a whole whack of ideas. I don't know um, what else. That's pretty much what I have. I don't have much in the way of supplies. I'm just starting my stash. But uh, if I got through all those papers and colored them all up and stuff, then I'll have quite the stack of paper. <laughs> And then you can make envelopes or make journal cards out of them. You can do whatever. Um, and, you know, like you can do like one thing, like paint them, let it dry, and then go and do spatter on top. 
uh, blend stuff, like mix colors together and do kind of like marbly kind of effects. So the sky's the limit. And uh, you know, it's something that's almost free. You use whatever you have on hand and you get these cool funky patterned papers. So I hope you enjoyed. Like, I really like how the, um, the uh, watercolor um, pencils are working. That's the ink. That's the watered down acrylic. Watered down acrylic. And yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you want more little quick random tips or things to build your stash on the cheap, let me know. I make them as I go along. If I get ideas, I've been seeing these kicking around and uh, you know, like, hey, what can I do with them? You know, it's cool paper. So, and I like the whole upcycling idea and, and all that stuff. So. Uh, if you like this, thumbs up so I can know, and if you want, leave a comment. I love comments, and if you haven't, subscribe to my channel. Thanks, guys. See you next time.